is Michael Popak, and you know what time it is. It's time for Legal AF After Dark. You want to know more about the New York bond hearing before Judge Angoran from the perspective of lawyers who practice in New York? Do you want to find out what happened to the $175 million bond? Whether Donald Trump is going to be able to stop the enforcement of the $465 million civil fraud judgment? Or is he going to have to go back to the drawing board? We break it all down for you on Legal AF. Take a listen. Let's talk quickly about the bond hearing. And I want to eventually play, or soon play, an Alina Haba special. Alina Haba quote, she doesn't know, she couldn't find her bond with two hands. Yet she feels she can be a legal commentator about it. There was a hearing. We talked a lot about it. Alicia, uh, Alicia, sorry. Letitia James looked at the bond that was filed by Donald Trump for $175 million, which was a discount that the Appellate Division First Department gave to Donald Trump for no good reason. Instead of having him required to post an undertaking of $465 million to stop the collection of the New York uh, civil fraud judgment obtained by Letitia James for the people of the state of New York, they said, no, $175, $175 million is fine. Donald Trump was all excited. Yay, I've got that in the bank. This won't be a problem. Yet he was having a problem getting a bonding company to the extent that he needed a bonding company to post it. Now, look. If Donald Trump had the $175 million, which he apparently has in a Charles Schwab account in cash or in securities, he could have posted that. He didn't need, let me repeat, he did not need a bonding company. He could have just posted the undertaking directly to putting the cash with the uh, court registry and his uh, requirement would be satisfied. But Donald Trump doesn't do anything uh, straight. Everything's through a corkscrew method. And here he decided, oh, I know I need a bonding company between me and having to ultimately pay this money. So he went and found some home office of, of Don Hankey, Mr. Hankey, who, uh, his due diligence, uh, consisted of, uh, oh, I know Donald Trump. Okay. Let's give him the money. I mean, it was something like that. That was my artist rendering. Probably was a little more complicated, but not much. This company you never heard of. No one ever heard of it. New York doesn't really do bonds in New York called night specialty insurance company posted the bond. We all looked at the bond posting and said, it's deficient under New York law. It doesn't have the right undertaking language. And the finances seem to be underwater for the bonding company. Like they don't seem to have enough money to post to, to back the bond. Then then uh, Hanky took to the airwaves, enjoying his 15 minutes of fame, and said, I don't know where Donald Trump got the cash from for this, <laughs> but I took cash. Okay, now we know. It was a Charles Schwab account, and there was built-in language that the surety – would have to wait two days, like give Donald Trump a two-day head start before grabbing the cash to be able to pay it over to the attorney general should Donald Trump default on the judgment. Well, that also undercut the bond. Why is there any delay? What, so people can run to do appeals or or can whisk the money out? I mean, there was no limits. Donald Trump could just suck the money out of the bank account in that two-day period. And how is that an, a proper undertaking or security or collateral for a bond? Well, it wasn't. So there was a hearing, and and uh, and what happened at the hearing is what I practice a lot more civil law than Karen. What happened at that hearing is what happens every day at the New York State Supreme Court. It's like uh, I call it deli counter justice. Take a number, go in the hallway, cut a deal, come back and tell the judge what the deal is, and that's what the, that's what Angoron brokered. He questioned, he softened up the bonding company who was there. They had some experts ready to go, and. Um, he, he said, I'm, I don't think the bond is sufficient. It doesn't have the right language under New York law. I don't really understand this uh, posting of an account where it gives you two days to do it and there's securities and cash in there. It doesn't seem to be properly collateralized under New York law. Go And I'm troubled by Knight not being a, or really a New York entity that I, that that the, the attorney general can sue in New York on the bond. You're making them go down to Delaware. I don't like that either. Go in the hallway. Work this out. That's what judges do all the time in New York. It's a handling, haggling process, <laughs> legal terms. And uh, if you're not comfortable with it, then you shouldn't practice in New York, Alina Hava. They came back in and they improved considerably to the New York Attorney General's liking and ultimately to the judge's satisfaction elements of the bond that we all found troubling. For instance, the Knight Specialty Insurance Company waived jurisdiction and said that they can be sued in New York instead of in Delaware. Well, that was a good thing for the New York Attorney General and the people of the state of New York. They also said it can be all in cash and not a securities account. And not, in other words, it won't be trading. Donald Trump won't be raising and lowering the amount. You know, if it's a trading, T-R-A-D-I-N-G account, then it's tied to the stock market or the whatever market it's trading in. 
Sometimes it's up 3%. Sometimes it's down 4%. We don't want a trading account where he can trade it away. We want it cash. So that got improved. And a couple of other things. The judge said, I bless this. That's the improvement that we will allow. Thank you. Hearing over. But that's not what Alina Haba heard. What Alina Haba heard was, this judge doesn't know, how to, doesn't know bonds, doesn't know financial markets. I mean, this is my artist rendering. We actually have a clip. Let's play it. To tell you how hard it was for me to keep my face straight in that moment, <laughs> Sean, you can't make it up. This case should have been in the commercial division. It had no business being in the civil division in front of a judge that today was trying to invalidate any bond and doesn't understand that cash is green. And when cash is held by Charles Schwab, they can't go trade it. They can't move it around. It's not uh, the stock market. But he didn't understand basic. I, I mean, a, the more Alina Haba, you know, there's an old, uh, Karen, you remember this, there's an old adage out there that says, um, if you if you keep your mouth shut, doubts about your um, intelligence, you know, people can doubt your intelligence. But once you open your mouth, all doubt is removed. And every time Haba opens her mouth and she thinks she's doing a solid for her client, she's actually just undermines her own credibility. Judge Angoran has been on the bench for 15 years plus. Doesn't have to be in the commercial division. I know the judges in the commercial division. There's a couple of them. Yeah, they're good too. But every day, New York State Supreme Court justices and the financial capital of the world deal with uh, issues about finances, corporate and complex matters, and bonds. It's not. It wasn't Judge Angoran's first bond hearing, and he led the negotiations, if you will, in the hallway to improve the bond to meet his satisfaction and that of the New York Attorney General, and therefore the people of the state of New York. And this whole, he doesn't get a stock and a bond and a thing and a thing and it doesn't trade, it's a stock market. She doesn't know what the heck she's talking about. The Charles Schwab account, which backed the bond, was filled with securities and it was a trading account. It wasn't a cash account. She doesn't know what she's talking about. And until it was, until they committed to making it all cash, and not trade it so the value would go up and down. It wasn't proper security. And they're going to improve the language of the bond and the undertaking to match New York law and, of course, the waiver of jurisdiction. But these are complicated legal issues, and, they, and they're not great with a 10-second uh, uh, chuckle fest with Sean Hannity you know, to, to their public. They don't do what we do every day on Legal AF, which is break down complicated legal uh uh, issues and and concepts in a way that's both informative and hopefully entertaining. And that was the bond hearing. Anything you'd like to add to that, Karen? I just don't understand how she can lie. How <laughs> she can get up there. It, I mean, I, I guess it just makes no sense to me. And every time I see it happen, I, I say to myself, "That's how can they do that? How can you just get up there and say, it's a Charles Schwab account, you can't trade it, it's cash? Okay, that is the it's the opposite of what it is, right? right. I mean, I just don't get it. You're a lawyer. Cuz she because she's taking well, I I'm, I'm saying it rhetorically. She's taking advantage of her audience's lack of attention. They don't pay to There's no right-wing version of our show. Let's just put it that way. I'm not inviting one, but there is no right-wing version. There's no like alternate upside down earth where there's another Karen Freeman Ignifilo and a Popak without a beard who like do this, but from like the Republican- Like Bizarro Jerry Republican. from the Bizarro. Seinfeld episode. Yeah, yeah like Bizarro. The Bizarro, Jerry. like, yeah. Right, there It'd is like you and Ben, the Bizarro. The, who, I wonder who, <laughs> who our right. versions would be. So nobody, so they don't have that. So they, instead, the substitute for that is these this chuckle fest on Fox. But <laughs> but I don't. She doesn't. She first of all, she's not a New York lawyer. She's a New Jersey lawyer who has a little a rented office in a WeWork. I think it used to be a WeWork that she that she says she's got a New York office. She hasn't practiced in commercial division. I never heard of Alina Haba. She's from Bedminster, New Jersey. Not to start getting you know territorial over where you and I practice, but. You know, you know what I'm saying. I agree with you. Welcome back. That was Legal AF. We do that four or five different ways. We curate the best and top stories, the intersection of law and politics. We bring it to you in one place exclusively on the Midas Touch Network. That was a show I do on Wednesdays with Karen Freeman and Nifilo. On Saturdays, we do the weekend wrap-up of Legal AF with Ben Micellis and me. If you like lawyers talking about what they know what they're talking about at the intersection of law and politics, you've come to the right place. Right here, Midas Touch Network. Help them get to 300, uh, sorry, let's try it again. Help them get to 3 million. One day it'll be 300 million. Free subscribers only on the Midas Touch Network. And then when you join us on Wednesdays and Saturdays, we'll tell you why we call the show Legal AF. Maybe you can guess. Uh, so if you like what we're doing, 
Uh, we, we thank you for being part of the audience already. Maybe you didn't get a chance to hear that particular segment. Now you have. Take that, uh, that clip, send it off to friends and family and others in your life and say, hey, maybe you'd like Legal AF too. Take a listen. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then we welcome you to join our audience and you'll get a healthy dose of legal and political analysis exclusively on the Midas Touch Network. So until my next hot take, until my next Legal AF, this is Michael Popak report. Hearee, hearee, Legal AF Law Breakdown is now in session. Go beyond the headlines and get a deep dive into the important legal concepts you need to know and we discuss every day on Legal AF. Exclusive content you won't find anywhere else, all for the price of a couple of cups of coffee. Join us at patreon.com slash legal AF. That's patreon.com slash legal AF.